Prax answers questions. Dream Unique Content asks, I got questions, sir. I'm not sure about connecting everything from PSU to motherboard. I know where 24 pin connector goes and that's pretty much it. Are the power, restart, LED, SATA connectors? And are they all marked on the motherboard? Very good builds. I subbed. Keep it up. There are several connectors that have to connect to the motherboard from the PSU. One of them is the EATX 12 volt 8 pin connector. This gives power to your CPU and voltage regulator. Uh, if this is not connected, your computer may seem like it's powered on, but there won't be anything actually happening. From here we can see the 24 pin ATX power connector that connects directly into the motherboard. And we can also see a couple of random fan headers on the motherboard as well. Here, just below the 24-pin ATX power connector, you can see a USB 3 header that's plugged into the board. On the video card, you can see we've got the dual 8-pin PCIe connectors that provide power for your graphics card. And just behind the graphics card and below, you can see the SATA connectors. Everything is labeled on the motherboard fairly well. Here we can see your USB headers, which are for your front panel USB if you have USB 2.0 and for any of your devices such as your Corsair Link or your Corsair power supplies that have a USB header to connect to the motherboard for use with Corsair Link. Here we can see another fan header for the motherboard as well as what Asus calls their Q connector which allows you to plug in all of your front panel power switches, LEDs into the header before plugging it into the motherboard. Below the storage device we can see another USB 3 header as well as your front panel audio connector on the left. The bottommost PCI Express slot runs in 2x or 4x mode depending on the devices you have connected. The center PCIe X16 slot actually runs at X8. This slot is used for dual SLI or other components. Your topmost PCI Express X16 slot should be used strictly for your video card. The 16 lanes on this top slot on the Z170 motherboard interface directly with the PCI lanes available to your CPU. Here we can also see another fan header, which was used by me for the rear fan connection. This USB connector here connects to my Corsair all-in-one water cooler, which is leading down to a USB header in order for me to connect it with Corsair Link when I'm using the operating system. The bottom Q connector is labeled so that you know where to plug everything in from your front panel. Here's the Q connector to show you exactly where to plug in your front panel connectors. You can see ground and power for your power switch, power LED minus and power LED plus for your power LED. You don't want to get this reversed as it may actually cause damage to your LED. The speaker plug in the Q connector is not required unless you have an internal speaker in your case. The internal speaker are for the little beeps that your motherboard may need to make in case you have RAM or something that's not in installed properly. However, most motherboards now have their own basic onboard speaker in order to provide these error beeps. On the opposite side, you've got your hard drive LED connection and your reset switch. The reset switch you just have to connect to ground and reset and that will trigger and short that connection to cause your computer to reboot anytime you hit your reset button. You can see here that the connector for your front panel is labeled. You can see it does show power LED minus, power LED, power switch, hard drive LED, and reset. So you can connect them directly to the motherboard. However, I do recommend using the Q connector for the motherboard as it will make plugging it in a lot easier. Once again, guys, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments as I'd be happy to answer them. And if you liked my video, please like and subscribe.